When thinking about quality third-party controllers for the Switch, the one I can always rely on is 8-Bit Do. Although I like to say 8-Bit Do because it sounds better. But uh, to stop all the comments, I'll say 8-Bit Do. They have more controllers than one can keep up with at this point. I've bought a good few of them and they have served me very well. The NES 30 Pro was a cool enough early one, but things really kicked off properly with the SNES 30 Pro and the Pro Plus, both of which I use way more than my Joy-Cons. But recently, they've started shipping this new one, the Micro, and I thought I'd take a look at it in case I need a lo-fi experience or to take with me on the go. Let's take a look. The 8-Bit Doe Micro ships in two colors, Blandigo and Flem Green. I'm not a fan. What's wrong with like a classic color? Now, I know what you may be thinking. You've seen something like this before. The Dinky Zero 2, for example. And yes, that is equally tiny and compact, but only has 12 buttons and was highly limited in which games it could work with. The Micro, however, has added four more. The absolute madman. You have a home button, which I can't believe Zero Two didn't have, and the less useful screenshot button. There is also ZR and ZL, so in total, it has four shoulder buttons, whereas Zero Two only had two. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean it's blown the whole Switch library apart in terms of compatibility, but it's certainly better than the borderline useless Zero Two in that regard. This is now perfect for most 2D games, not all, of course, if any game has an important use for the right analog stick, like an item or skill wheel, then you are buggered. But most standard 2D games should be viable. 3D games, no chance. Well, okay, not no chance, because as you can see, I'm playing Pokemon Snap. The thing is, what they've done is, this D-pad is actually the left analog stick. It functions as the left analog stick which opens up more possibilities, but it can also cause some issues for the fact that now technically it doesn't have a D-pad. This D-pad ain't a D-pad. So any 2D game that only allows you to move with the D-pad, there are some out there, you're buggered. Like Kirby 64, it does not let you use the analog stick to move, so uh, well, you, you can't move Kirby with this. While I think most platformers these days would entertain the idea of some idiots using the analog stick to move the characters, some won't. I can't think of any at the top of my head right now, but uh, having reviewed countless 2D games, they do exist, I promise you. There's definitely going to be some confusion. There should have been like a switch to flip between analog and D-pad functionality. That would have fixed almost every issue. You'd still be able to play some 3D games that don't require camera movement, and you'd also be able to play pretty much every 2D action game you can think of. Now, I know with other controllers, I have seen that you can remap the analog stick and D-pad functionality, you can switch them. But uh, when I connected to their special app, there was nothing of the sort. In fact, it's literally only for keyboard functionality. There is no remapping controls as an actual game controller. Either that or I am massively missing something here. Maybe they need to update their app and then maybe they will do so at a later date, but so far it seems like an oversight. So this is certainly not a solution if you're looking for a new main controller. But as an alternative in specific circumstances, it's pretty cool, I guess. I tried it with a handful of games and my arthritis was mildly confused as to why I was putting myself through this, but then I told him, add revenue, and then he seemed pretty cool with it. And it was fine for most 2D games, but when I started having to use the shoulder buttons, oh man, the pain, oh my god, my hands were cramping, like, instantly. It felt so uncomfortable. Playing Pokemon Snap was genuinely, not exaggeratingly, painful. Maybe it's because the ligaments in my hand aren't like used to it yet and they need to warm up, get used to it, but uh, I don't think I would play it this way voluntarily again. But forget me, because my main reason for purchasing it was because even though I do have fairly small hands, there is someone in my household with even smaller hands, my daughter. I thought, you know, depending on the game, she might like this, more comfortable for her. So now we can play some games together in co-op and she doesn't need like the big bulky controller. It's more focused, there's less to be confused about, less buttons. And she can use this as long as it's not like a 3D game, of course. And she found it all right. Maybe the buttons were unusually stiff for her, but she'll get used to it. Now, if you think this video has been mostly negative so far, well, strap in because uh, I need to go back to the D-pad. 
it's just not sensitive enough right now. I noticed while playing sometimes it wouldn't always register the input and the reason is that you need to be fairly aggressive with your input. Being gentle does not work. You can see I'm pressing down in the menu here. Yeah, I'm being a bit delicate, but I'm pressing it all the way down. It's just the initial force wasn't strong enough. And it's, it's bad, guys. I mean, I'm hoping there's an update coming to fix the sensitivity because it definitely needs to be better than this. And I did check to see if there was an update, but I couldn't see one at the time of making this. It's bad. It is it's pretty bad. It's a shame because I have loved every 8-bit dough product that I've owned so far. They're affordable, usually solidly built, but this, this is a letdown. There is one silver lining of positivity though, because with my three previous controllers, I've always had big issues with every single one of them. And all of them is the same one. Sometimes they just don't want to connect. Now, maybe that's me. My previous relationships have said that I do have issues with connecting, but I don't think Bluetooth is what they meant. Sometimes it feels like my Switch and my 8-bit dough had a bit of a falling out overnight, especially when switching between them. But, so far, this little controller connected almost instantaneously, like magically so. And once it connected, it reconnects even quickly as well, like I've never seen before. So, uh, that's good. Now, outside of the Switch itself, there is some interesting things you can do, like you can actually use it with Android devices, but we don't use Android in my family, so it's not much use to me. You can also use it as a keyboard function, which sounds incredibly specific as to what it could have possibilities. I mean, the PR shows somebody using it with Photoshop, but I don't know. Answers on a postcard, please. What could this be used for practically, especially with me editing videos and such? Can this help me edit videos? Let me know. But overall, this 8-bit dough micro, bit of a disappointment. Not even a bit of it, it's quite a disappointment. I guess it is cheap as hell. I got mine delivered for $16, which is cheaper than it is on Amazon, but I live in China and they have regional pricing. They prefer their comrades to foreigners. So uh, yeah, $16, I couldn't actually say no. And my daughter, she will definitely get use out of it. Will I? No way. If I'm going portable, I'd still take this with me. It's bigger, but still small enough to fit in my bag and can play every Switch game no problem. And I've never had input issues with it like I do with this one. For adults, the micro is more gimmicky. It's, it's, not, it's not for adults, okay? It's for kids. It's a nice way to give them a cheaper controller without forking out for a $60 Pro controller that they'll probably spill cola on or something. The weird implementation of the D-pad actually being the analog stick is still weird to me and I'm surprised there isn't a dip switch somewhere on this controller to switch between D-pad and analog on the fly, which would iron out almost any issue with compatibility. Seems like a massive oversight and in my opinion it's why I won't be using it myself for anything other than retro titles where I know there won't be issues at all, unless I'm playing Kirby 64. And also the D-pad sensitivity is just out of whack, it's just not acceptable. Alright, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful. I'm very rarely negative, but it is a disappointment. I usually like 8-bit dough. If you did enjoy this video, if you found it useful, leave a like, subscribe, and watch some of our other stuff. I don't really do tech stuff very often. We usually do game reviews, uh, physical Switch releases. We do a roundup of that. And my other channel, A Bit More Jordan, uh, that has a lot more me. Go over there, have a look. I'd appreciate it. Have a good day, guys.